morning, Father. Our coming of you into today's Eucharistic celebration. Today's family, I like to live humanity of humanity. All humanity. Humanity of humanity. All humanity. Reminding ourselves again and again that someday we will be gone from this world. And the only thing that we will be reminded of or remembered will be the good things we have done this world. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks it out and bright and fair, when the sail of the end shall gather the root bar on the shore, and the road is far and beyond the happy land, when the road is far and beyond the when the road is on the beyond, 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 I will be there. If you be there, it's up again. We all will be there. We all will be there. First of all, I want to thank all of you for the wonderful cooperation, for pulling our time, our resources, our talent together in giving Father God the division for the mass. The bishop was really happy. The priests were all happy. Parishioners, friends, and non parishioners that were here for that funeral, they were so happy. I want to thank the choir, they were so great that day. I want to thank the lectors, the Eucharistic ministers, the servers. Our deacon, the funeral planners, the ushers, the mass coordinators, the knights of Columbus, the lunch of ladies, who we were really great, and all those that brought food. I want to thank our staff, I want to thank the documentation ministry. It was really great, and if you go to our website, they have put everything in the video, so you can see the funeral service from the beginning, all the people that were here from the beginning to the end of that service, the documentation the ministry, did a wonderful job. Father John lives a life of service, a life of love. He was there. For us all. Now, rest in peace. I know it is equally difficult for his family and also difficult for the families of our beloved parishioners, the Tutak family and Sheila family. Stella Tutak lived a wonderful life, simple life. She was always there for everyone, loved her family. Her face counted a lot throughout her life. I want to commiserate with Mary, Daniel. The rest of the generation and the time happened. 
Genevieve lives a great life. When I was singing this song, a little fast on Friday, I could picture just Genevieve smiling and raising her hands. Her spirituality counted a lot. If Genevieve was going for surgery, Genevieve would come to me and say, Father, God bless me. A few weeks ago, she had her eyes surgery. She said, Father, God bless my eyes. When she fractured her leg, she said, Father, God bless my leg. When she was going for a retreat, she came to me and said, Father, God bless me. That was her face. And her face rubbed off on her family. For the kids, I really did get it in the church. I need to stop, I want to come this way to the running. It is not for you, but know that your sister is the one of life. Know that she rests in peace with the Lord. And as we reflect on the wonderful lives that this people live, these four great people that went before us last week, Father Don, Father Phil, Stella, and Jenny. This message comes to us today. Vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. <laughs> 220 years before the coming of Jesus Christ, in Israel was a great wise man called Kohelet. It was a time that the people of Israel were experiencing a big boom that had come. And they had so many people coming from different countries. Their lifestyle changed. They focused more on money, on wealth. But this wise man, Kohelet, he was thinking differently. He asked this question. Why do people die? Why do we toil? After all this hard work, we leave this world. And all our toil go into the hands of why pain? Why suffering? Why are those difficulties? Why death? Correlates didn't give us any answer, but gave us words to point out harm. But in the second reading of today, the answer for the first. He says, Look for the things that are above. Let your thoughts be on the things that are above, not on the things of this world. And the gospel of today summarizes it by saying, Build treasures for yourselves, not here on earth, but in heaven. And as we reflect on this message, just think of your friends, your beloved ones, your co workers, your fellow parishioners. That you walked with several years ago, and now they are no more. They are gone before us. Does it really occur to you that one day you will be gone? Does it occur to you that all those things you are accumulating, the world is full, the world is full, there is no longer space in the closet, that one day, you will live for the sins. And as we 
every flight of the people that pass by, they know that all those things were treasure when they were alive. But what? The person passes away. Family members will take some of those things. Friends will take some of those things. And the rest of them will go to good way. The rest of them will go to good way. All those things will be treasured. If someone touches this way, you are no more of that touching it. All those things will go to good way. Today's reading reminds us. To think deeply, to listen deeply on why we are in this world, according to the mystery of this life. It reminds us again and again that this world is not our final destination. We are only for pilgrims here on earth. And on the last day, we will stand before God to give an account of our stewardship. Now, as I was reflecting on this message, I really think that Joyce Mike had some words to pass on to us. Joyce Mike said, Ready or not, someday it will come to an end. There will be no more sunrise. No minutes, no hours, no days. All things you have collected, whether treasure or forgotten, will pass to someone else. Your wealth, fame, and temporal power will become irrelevant. Your grudges, resentments, frustrations, jealousies will finally disappear. Your hopes, ambitions, plans, and to do this will expire. The wins and losses that once seem so important will fade away. It won't matter where you came from. It won't matter whether you are beautiful or brilliant. Even gender, color of skin will be irrelevant. And she asked this question, so what will matter? How will the value, value of your days be measured? What will matter is not what you bought, but what you built. Not what you got, but what you gave. What will matter is not your success, but your significance. What will matter is every act of integrity, Compassion, courage, sacrifice that enriched, empowered, or encouraged others. Follow the example. It reminds me again and again of the words of Stephen Gray that I expect to pass through this world only for the cross. Therefore, any law. Any service, any generosity, any kindness I wish to show my fellow human beings, I better share it now. I better not defer nor neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. Vanity upon vanity reminds us to love our brothers and sisters. Vanity upon vanity. Reminds us that what we do for ourselves dies with us, but what we do for others remains and is immortal. Vanity upon vanity reminds us that we are not truly lived until we have done something for someone that can never repay us. Let us take note today the words of Henry James that there are three most important things in our lives. Number one, kindness. Number two, kindness. Number three, kindness. As we reflect on this message, 
Let me ask you this question. If you have only but one week to live here on this earth, what would you do? What change would you like to make? What impact would you like to make in life's life? How would you like to bring smiles to the faces of men? How would you like to change the face of men? We can always do this, not through our own power, but through the grace of God. And when we have done this, we will be ready when the trumpet sounds. And so as we begin this wonderful week, let us begin it with acts of kindness, love, service, and generosity. So that we will be when the trumpet sounds. When the road is on the pure 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 Thank you.